Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where automation fuels the imagination of every space engineer. Today, we're going to go over an automated small ship building system. The system isn't too complicated, and it primarily just uses event controllers and a few timer blocks. But it sure is handy to be able to replicate the same ship over and over and over again. The setup I created actually allows you to immediately control the ship without having to grind away a darn block or anything that's used for building it. I'll show you what I mean when we get down there. I have added a few different things onto this asteroid base. For one, I added a totally different level. That way we can keep our shipbuilding out of the way of everything else going on. All the doors are triggered by sensors. And this sensor specifically activates our small shipbuilding system. As you can see, the sign is on for caution, but we're going to enter anyways and take that risk. You can see the large arm of the welding system coming downward. Don't worry, it'll level out eventually. And here's our projected small ship. I really just built a basic defense drone, not needing anything particular yet. But as you can see, there's a merge block that's going to be connected to it. Surprisingly, merge blocks can be welded and in place on a projector. This is all ran by a few event controllers and I think five timer blocks altogether. It does take a little while for the arms to get there. They're moving at 0 0.1 meters. I sped it up just a little bit and that way it'll take a lot less time. However, if you're doing this in real time, it will take you a while to actually watch those pistons completely extend. As you can see, the welders are busy putting together this projected ship. It doesn't take too long, even though it's moving fairly slow. On the left hand side, you might be seeing the timer blocks flash on and off as they're dictating the different controls of the machine. And I think that's it for all of the welding. Let's go ahead and speed this up. Once it's retracted, the arm will gradually make its way back to the ceiling and out of the way of your ship. It has such a long reach, imagine how long of a small ship you can actually build with this. The only limitation will be getting it back out of the door afterwards. And I think it's about there, almost. And there it goes. It's going to slowly rest back at the top. I had to adjust the angle of one of the hinges just so it wouldn't take out our overhead caution light. And there you have it. You can see that the merge block is now turned off and the ship should be able to fly no problem. If we remote access here, you'll be able to see it as a small grid. 19 meters away, that is the closest. Let's go ahead and control that one. There it is. And without any other controls besides moving forward, we're able to simply leave the projector bay. Remember, if you're going to fly this back out of a base such as this, you need to set your sensors to read small ships. Otherwise, they won't open or close properly after you pass through them. I think it's over here. Where's that exit? Ah, there we go. 
So as we travel through, this is the rear camera, and I'm just showing you how it's already triggered the floor to close. Through the airtight hanger doors, and finally the blast doors. For the blast door sensor, I simply put it on the left hand side here. So if you're going to move to the right or exit to the right, it's probably not going to work. You can extend the range of field as well, and then it'll trigger whenever you come out of the door. I wasn't worried about it too much at the time though. Airtight hanger doors almost completely open. And somewhere along the lines, this floor will open. And there you have it. We made it all the way back through, not a problem, and never actually left our seat or anything. This is all drone operated. Do not have to grind away a block to disconnect the ship. The construction of this arm is fairly simple. It has two primary hinges, a piston pointing downward so you can adjust the height in which your welders are facing. Then you have two horizontal pistons and four welders. Above here, I just simply installed a flashing light you can see on the light, it's attached to a rotor on the top. You can always make the rotor spin if you want to make it more of a flashing strobe light effect. Over here on the projector arm, we have the merge block, which automatically shuts off at the end of the cycle, the projector, and all your timers and event controllers. The setup is pretty simple when you look at it, and easy to program. So the ship build sensor is the one by the airtight hangar doors right before you enter the ship build area. This is how I have the control set up. And its actions are just going to kick on the ship build timer block number five. That is simply going to start the entire process. The ship build timer block number five has a one second delay and that's it. We don't need it to spend a lot of time on it. It's going to open the ship building area airtight hangar doors and can turn on the event controller one. On the event controller one, it is set where it will activate as soon as that door is opened. As you can see, there are a lot of other events you may be able to use if you want to set yours up a little bit differently. If you select door, it gives you all the doors available within your station. So make sure you're choosing the correct ones. On the bottom here, I simply added all the ship build hangar doors. And then selected the AND gate at the bottom. The AND gate simply means that all of these doors have to be open at the same time for the event to occur. Otherwise, some doors might move slower or faster. So this event controller, what it's going to do, it's going to turn on the timer block one. For timer block one, we only have a one second delay. And our setup actions are a lot for this one. We're going to reverse the hinges, extend the pistons, turn on the projector, turn on the event controller number two, the construction beacon lights, the beacon rotor, 
we're going to turn on the merge block and finally the LCD display. From timer block one, since we turned on event controller two, that's going to be the next one we set up. On event controller two, we're going to be using it to read where our horizontal pistons are. We want them to be fully extended before the next event occurs. Mark it equal or greater than. And I put the threshold at 100%. You could also vary it depending on how big your ship is or where your projector is going to be. Then I selected the welder piston 2 and welder piston 3 because those are horizontal pistons. And finally the AND gate. Because I want them fully extended both before the welders turn on and the next action occurs. So then you can select action, and as you can see, timer block 2 starts. Timer block 2 does not have as many things on it as compared to timer block 1, but it's just as vital. Only a one second delay. And our setup actions... are to reverse piston number three and turn on your welder and turn on timer block three. I am only reversing third piston because this thing needs to go fairly slow in retraction in order to weld. The next timer block 3 has a delay of 25 seconds. I give it 25 seconds, you might have to give it a little bit longer until your number 1 is completely retracted, just depends on how big your small ship is. Timer block 3 will reverse or retract the number 2 piston and it will turn on event controller number 3. Then event controller number three is going to read our piston position again, but this time it's going to be equal or less than. Instead of the equal or greater than, we put it equal or less than and the threshold at zero. That means your pistons will be fully retracted before the event occurs. And again, we put welder piston two and welder piston three also engaging the AND gate, so both of them will be fully retracted before an event happens. The event we want to happen is to have timer block number 4 start. Timer block number 4 is basically how we shut everything off after we're done building the ship. Delay of only one second, the minimum. Your setup actions, you're going to turn off your merge block. Reverse your hinges. Turn off your welders. Turn off your event controller one. Turn off the construction lights. Turn off the beacon rotor. Turn off the projector. And finally, turn off the LCD screen since all construction has been completed. And that's about it because we have turned everything off. It should not continue to build unless you want it to because that event controller one is off, so if you move their tight hanger doors, it will not turn back on. Timer block number five is a simple setup to open or close the doors again, and then turn on event controller number one. So if you did want the system to continuously repeat, you could by setting up the ship build sensor to trigger timer block five when the ship exits.
For now, if ship build sensor number two is set up with a general parameter that fits in that area, and we need to select detect small ships. That's what's going to trigger it if you want to start the process over again using timer block five. Here's a general breakdown of all the settings I use for the event controllers. It's fairly cut and dry. Here are the breakdown for all the timer blocks. Yours may vary depending on how you have it set up. Overall, it's a pretty easy build and it didn't take too long. I think building the room took longer than building the automated ship builder. Well, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of the video, and please leave your tips and tricks in the comments section. I appreciate it.